When Harvey Milk became one of the first openly gay elected officials in the country in 1977, it was a landmark moment in the movement for gay liberation and LGBTQ rights. But while Milk was one of the first openly gay candidates to win an election, he was not the first to run for public office. That honor belongs to another San Franciscan by the name of Jose Saria, a political activist and drag performer whose campaign 16 years earlier first demonstrated the potential political strength of the gay community. Saria was also the founder of the Imperial Council, the oldest still existing LGBTQ charity organization in the world. The story of how the council came to be and of its unique role in the fight for LGBTQ equality is the subject of the new documentary, 50 Years of Fabulous. Here's a preview. The bars were to the gay civil rights movement with the churches were to the black civil rights movement. After his election, he said that no one will run for office in San Francisco ever again without first knocking on the door of the gay community. In those early dark years of AIDS, the only thing we had were each other. Every night a week, they were fundraising. They were selling junk, they were auctioning. I want to run so I can continue the legacy of the Imperial Court. I'm proud to be part of this. Anybody that's in there is proud to be part of this. United we stand or divided the kitchens one by one. And joining us now as part of 13 celebrates the summer of 69 is the director of 50 Years of Fabulous, Jethro Patalinghug. Jethro, welcome to the program. Hi, thank you so much for having me here. So Jethro, <laughs> um, can you elaborate on this fascinating organization? What is <laughs> the Imperial Council, otherwise known as the Imperial Court System. Well, like you said, it was founded by Jose Saria, the, the very first openly gay man who ran for public office in the United States. When he ran, he was actually a drag queen. And in 1965, um, he founded the organization, the Imperial Council. And what they do is they raise money for the community. And they became really useful during the HIV and AIDS crisis, uh, where the government was not even acknowledging the crisis. Um, they raised money for um, for for those who were sick during that time, and they've existed up until now. They now have about 73 chapters all over uh, the United States, Mexico, Canada, and Hawaii. Well, you know, I, I never heard of the organization, but anyone who sees this film will understand what impact it had, not just in San Francisco, but beyond in many ways. Mm -hmm. How come we don't know about it, and and why hasn't a film about it been made before? Well, there are so many LGBT organizations right now, and they are one of the pioneers. You know, uh, they've, they've actually sponsored a lot of grassroots organizations that have um, started in San Francisco. And um, why we don't know about it is, um, is actually a big question, because that's what the film is, uh, what, what actually tries to tackle is that. It's because of the newer generations right now who have all these freedoms and rights that they have. They don't feel the need to be part of you know, a niche organization that caters to uh, a particular um, need that they, they needed before when they existed. Talk about Jose Saria. I mean, again, uh, the organization's fascinating. He's even more fascinating. You mentioned a little bit about him. Talk about yeah. him and the impact that he had um, in San Francisco and beyond. Jose Saria was really um, one of the pioneers, as I said, and he inspired a lot of a lot of people to really speak up. Um, he had um, quite a relationship with Harvey Milk as well. And because of the movement that he he started, it, it has actually strengthened and proven, you know, the political power that L the LGBT movement has in San Francisco. And he has a plaque in, in, in San Francisco and the street has been named mm -hmm. of him in San Francisco as well. And he was one of the first LGBTQ uh, leaders um, who went beyond acceptance of just wanting acceptance. He was one of the first who talked about gay pride. You know, prior to him running for um, for the office, he actually had a 15 year stint at the Black Cat. So he that's was a bar. quite yeah, that's a bar. It's it's uh, um, it's a bar where he was an entertainer, you know, um, and that bar was is was really instrumental for the very first court battle that happened um, that really opened the doors for our rights to be recognized um, in legislation. The fight during that time in in around the 60s in the Black Cat was a fight for our community to be able to gather 
legally in any public space. So that that's very instrumental in all the other fights that came afterwards. Mm. Um, I, I would consider it a precursor to maybe even the Stonewall fight that, that happened. You know, you, you touched on this, um, but how did the AIDS crisis affect the council? And what was the council's chief contribution in the battle against AIDS? So there's so many layers into this, and, and, and I'm really excited um, to share the film to everyone because the, the, the Imperial Council, they have an emperor and an empress. Mm. And, and prior to them getting together, there was a separation. There was an identity um, war between the femme and the masculine side. There was the masculine side of the gay community and there was the drag queens. And they were not together prior to the, gay, the, the HIV, and, HIV and AIDS crisis. So when the epidemic happened, that fighting within the community immediately stopped and they realized that they had to come together and become one to help the community. And, and so in that decision to be, become one as an organize, organization, they became really stronger as a community. And so the Imperial Council became a strong community as one. There was no separation. All they concentrated was just to help the people that were dying during that time. And the, the Imperial Council even claims that they invented fundraising yeah. Because they fundraised, they pioneered, and they they made fundraising even um, perfect to a point that right now they are um, a powerhouse fundraising organization that continually raises money. And so during the HIV and AIDS crisis, they were one of the organizations, alongside other organizations, that have raised millions of dollars every year for the community when the government was not taking care of them. So, Jethro, one last question. We have about 20 seconds left. You talked earlier about how the new generations of, uh, of members of the LGBTQ community may not be all so aware of its history and of the, and of the struggles. Uh, what did yeah. you learn in the course? You're a young man. What did you learn in the course of making this film about the history of the struggles of the LGBTQ community? I'm so thankful that I made this film because now I have a sense of pride of who I am and what my forefathers have fought for in the past. This struggle has been here for so long, more than 50 years. And so I, I now have a, sort of like a direction and a compass of what we have fought as a community and how we can use that as we face this new frontier of challenges in our community. So I think um, everyone should study the past and the history of the LGBT community in order for them to be able to participate and know the direction, uh, what they need to do right now. All right, Jethro. Well, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about your film. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me here. Thank you. Thank you.